Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Michael. Hello. We have Amy. Hello. We have Stuart. No, we don't. Who has become one with the Force. (laughs) (laughs) Aw, what a shame. (laughs) We have Scarecrow. Good morning. (laughs) Is that a morning or an evening? Morning. Yeah. (laughs) And we have Eugene. Hello. And joining us a little bit later, after we've finished covering Doctor Who, will be EJ. So, until then, let's have some fun. Yeah, and then kick we'll it off. Numbers of Aussies and uh, Americans. Yeah. So, let's start it off with Doctor Who Christmas Special. Now, I know at least one of you loved it, so I'll let him oh. go first. Scarecrow, uh, what were your thoughts? <laughs> uh, Alright. I-, I thought... It was a well-written episode. It just wasn't written for Capaldi. It felt wrong. In all honesty, nothing that made Capaldi's Doctor the epic Doctor it has been was in there this in this episode. So I'm a little no, meh it did, about it. Did it did definitely feel like it was written for one of the others. It but feels outside like it's of that, written for Matt Smith. It really yeah. feels like it was written for Smith. Yeah. Um, Other than that, it was a good episode, and I love the fact they portrayed River Slut as a, River <laughs> Song as a complete slut. Yeah, that was that was awesome. <laughs> that was the greatest slip ever. Just, just wow, wow. Oh. Okay, it's still early for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, so the, the, Michael, what do you think? Since so, you're effectively the exact opposite side. Wait, exact opposite? Why? Why am I the exact opposite? Because he didn't like it very much, and you oh, did. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have to disagree. I mean, I did not feel like it was written for a different Doctor. Now, I do understand that it, it didn't have a lot of what Capaldi's main traits, you know, his age, you know, his kind of arrogance at times. You're right. It didn't have that always, but I did see it, especially when he kept trying to, you know, kept being like, come on, you know who I am, you know? And he was just kept getting so exasperated when she couldn't figure out who he was. He's like, you know, and really? I, I think... Well, that... He effectively said it. I am the Doctor. And she's like, go away. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> what? <laughs> and and you, could see, you could see him being himself in that scene, especially, where he's just like, what? But yeah. honestly... Uh, like when, he's, when, he's, when he sits down opposite her, and she's like, stop frowning. And he's like, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, honestly, I think uh, it's just River worked so well with Capaldi, in my opinion. They're yeah. both, you know, age-wise, they both work together, and it just it really went and it showed it made more depth to River's character, showing her, you know, showing what she does outside of, you know, her time with the Doctor, and <laughs> I loved how how she she's married to everybody. <laughs> That was funny too, but I just love how she says that how she reveals she's taken the TARDIS when he didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and so, then she goes over and opens up the panel and takes out the alcohol, and he's just <laughs> like, "What?" But yeah. I have to say, probably one of my the most emotionally like the scene I loved the most probably um, is or two. One was when he's like, "Finally, it's my turn," and he walks in the TARDIS and he's like, yeah. oh, "It's it's bigger." <laughs> <laughs> that was phenomenal. I loved that. He he just <laughs> went so over the top with that. It was so funny. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the other scene that I loved... My, my, my whole understanding of the laws of physics and the universe has <laughs> been totally flipped off. It's like, it's like wow. You, wow. Just what, wow. What kind, of, what kind of a school did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. but, um, but no, my other, my other most favorite scene had to be when 
they're talking about how when she's like in the doctor, you know, and he's like, for all we know, he's right here in this very, in, you know, in this very room. She's like, no, he's not. And you know, basically, and she turns and, and, and you know, Capaldi's like, uh, River, River. And she turns <laughs> and looks at him and he smiles and he's like, hello, sweetie. And that <laughs> just, that scene, I just died. It was amazing. <laughs> the look on her face as she realizes what's happened. <laughs> yeah. I just like it how they had it. They actually went to the effort of digitally restoring a photo of each of them to put in that wallet for IDs. Yeah. So, and then right at the very end, he gives her the sonic screwdriver and sort of says, look, this where you're going, there's no way out of this. Except like, that she has 24 years. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you've got, this is this is your last night. And she's like, well, how long's the night? It's like 24 years. And she's just like, okay, I'll take, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> She's which, like, I, I hate you. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> so, and she's like, what, 200 and something at that point. Yeah, yeah, she said she was 200. And I was just like, whoa, what? <laughs> so, I mean, she's been faffing about after Matt Smith for a while. Yeah. Well, no, this, this, uh, no, she had just come from the, from Manhattan. So. Uh... But yeah. Yeah. Uh, th- yeah. uh, that's it with mine <laughs> yeah I, I really enjoyed it um, I still think it's probably one of it'll be one of his best episodes I agree and m- a lot of that credit does go to River yes um, and yeah it was it was a lot of fun and it was it had its moments of oh come on and it's moments and, but every episode has that and I think the, the positives ultimately outweigh the negatives and I would definitely give it at least eight, eight and a half out of ten. Agreed. Six and a half, seven for me. Six and a half, seven. All right, it well, was a good episode. It just didn't feel right. That's my main gripe. All right. Um, Amy or Eugene, do you want to comment on Doctor Who before I add EJ back in? No, I, I... watched it. Eugene, Go ahead, Amy. I haven't watched it. I haven't. I'm sorry to say I haven't seen Doctor Who in, in a while. Ah, but it fair was enough. It was interesting listening to everybody else talk about it. Yeah. The, one thing I, <laughs> the one thing I found epic about it was right at the end where River's getting all teary yeah. and whatnot and Capaldi just goes, spoilers. Yes. <laughs> well, have you seen someone edited over um, her interactions with Matt Smith and um, the, yeah, her interactions with Matt Smith over that end scene from the tenth from the library, where she's talking about it? That wasn't with Smith. That was with Capaldi. Yeah. No. At, no, at the end of uh, one of the fans. Yes. For they took the library scene, the end of the scenes. And yeah. edited, in, edited in the flashbacks of this from this episode. Yeah, some of it was from this episode, but a lot of it was from Matt Smith. Was it? I don't. It was. Maybe yeah. I saw a shortened version. I only saw it was only about a minute and a half. Yeah, it was. It's only about a minute and a half. But there's shots from Capaldi and shots of Matt Smith's timeline, but mostly oh. Matt Smith. Oh, okay. So it, it mentions when she starts talking about the the place they're at and where where he got where she received the Sonic from him. Um, then it shows Capaldi then, but later on, it shows mostly Matt Smith for the rest of it. Oh, maybe I stopped after that. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna add EJ back in, and it's time to get into the meat of this. Let's see. I told him we wouldn't be more than ten minutes. We haven't been more than ten minutes. What? Be, be yeah. Oh, we have EJ. We do. Yep. Uh, no, we, we don't. We might have EJ. We don't have me. Yeah, we have uh, you, don't I worry. I think we lost you. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I lose myself all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, let's move on to the Star Wars Episode 7 discussion. Now, this is no holds barred. The spoiler window is over. So, if you still haven't seen Episode 7 and you want to avoid spoilers, now is your last chance to turn this thing off. Three, and I will spoil two, the shit out of this. One. <laughs> Time's up. Sp- spoiler free. Let's go at it. You what mean, did we think? You mean not spoiler free. Oh spoiler yeah, not spoiler free. Spoiler, spoiler full. Spoiler full. Yes, I, I, I am the greatest host ever. I 
screw up everything. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, let's just start. Yeah. yeah. Gently pat on head. Yeah. <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> so. I was special. Throw out the airlock. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's start with the top of the list. Michael, what do you think? Ooh, so, and I, okay, I get a lot of the criticism that's come out of it after, you know, the initial, like, ooh, ah, wore off. I really yeah. do get it. It was very much a, you know, repeat of, you know, of episode four. But Plagiarism. I, it, I, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, anyway, I don't know if it's plagiarism, if it's for within the same series. There's, there's, a, by the there's a fine line between, between an homage and... And just flat out copying it. Yes, but okay. So. so, so this one was clearly very much so, and they and they kind of made fun of that in the movie, like when they put the Death Star up against Star Killer Base. You know, kind of just like it, look, it was just this totally... one's at, this one's bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I will say that the immense size of it compared. I didn't realize how how much bigger Star Killer Base was until then. Well, it just but, makes me makes me assume that either Kylo or Snoke has an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly tiny winky to need that much conversation. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, now keep in mind. Now I don't know. One of the, you, I'm sure you guys have seen the theory that Snoke is Darth Plagueis and that he has been there paying attention through the entire, you know, all of the Star Wars movies, and it would make sense kind of then that there would be a yet another weapon of mass destruction since he seemed he would if he was pulling the strings in the first two death stars and that would kind of make sense but yeah but think about it who goes you know what this big ultimate weapon got killed by some fighters that cost like yeah, a dollar killed by compared the to the guy, price the of the twice. compared to the size of the sphere <laughs> so we went you know what let's make it bigger and they made it bigger <laughs> and, and then let's left... force that one location that can blow it up yeah and leave, leave a giant hole that leads all the way to the core because you know, a tiny little grid across it which would have stopped all of the ships. That's too expensive. Can't afford hey, that. Hey, 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 hey. Starkiller Base didn't have a hole. It just had a regulator thing that stopped it from I've blowing up. I've not seen it in the poster. It had a massive hole in the center. That's where oh, the in the center, yes. Go pew pew. Yes, yes. But that's not how they blew it up. No. True. No. Um, but but uh, they flew they, in they and destroyed the, the rector. Like... The trench run was, the, was too much, in my opinion. That was where it went too far. Oh, oh no. hell no, that was the best part of the movie. No, it was yeah. great, but it was too much of a copy. I mean, that's where it just went to the point where it was like, okay, they didn't, this is too much, this is more than a homage. This is the most cheesy part of the entire movie as far as making it like episode four. It's Star Wars, what do you expect this but cheese? <laughs> <laughs> it. Wow. It. The, last, the last thing I'll say in my, from my review of the movie is that I think it was a very effective way to introduce the main character, the new characters. You didn't have to worry too much about the story. You could focus more on the characters themselves with a story that already was a very popular story from the beginning. And it, you know, and it still, it obviously captured everybody's love. I mean, if you haven't noticed, yeah, kind of just hit a billion in the fastest time period ever in history. And it's just, it was clearly... Just because, it, just because it makes lots of money doesn't no, mean I it's know, a good movie. I know, but for instance, I have multiple friends who have gone back and seen it three, four times now. I've only seen it twice, unfortunately. I want to I've see seen it, it three times. Well, I've seen okay. it three times, and every time that's... I've seen it, my rating has gone down. Well, <laughs> that's the thing to be too critical. <laughs> um, I expect... Bastard. Should I say yeah. that with bloody, um... Yahtzee? Uh, uh... <laughs> I expect that episodes eight and nine are going to finally take a different direction. What I will say, though... Now the character acting was superb. I loved the characters. Oh, loved the new yeah, characters. The, but the visual I... effects were great. The the acting was spectacular, except from the original guys. Um, they hey, were just hey, hey. To, they were totally outclassed by yeah, the Carrie new guys. Carrie Fisher was was did not was not the best actress in this. Oh one. no, Carrie Fisher didn't do the best job. But Hans, I have to say, my favorite line from this movie had to be when they yeah, and of course they also ripped off Phasma so much. They made her out to look like such a badass character and she sucked. But anyway... But that's what um, Boba Fett is. He looks like a badass character, so but he sucks. Okay, but Boba he... Fett wouldn't have let himself be captured and taken down the shields and let the entire planet he... destroyed. Sorry. No, got he just one hit and fell in a hole. Sarlacc pit. 
Yes, exactly. That's so like, that, according to canon, he gets stuck in that damn thing like three or four times. And it's like, how do you get stuck in a hole? It doesn't okay, so go anywhere, and it's on a planet out of literally thousands. Okay, but no, so um, my favorite line was when they had Phasma, and Han said, Is there a, tr- is there a garbage chute anywhere with a trash compactor? <laughs> that was pretty good. Face, it's like, I, I just oh I, shit. I just, that was that was I good. Just died laughing in the theater at that moment. It was I, just amazing. The entire theater died laughing when that happened. Yes, it was, was Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying it didn't have its moments, but yes. it's just yeah. It, it felt way like I understand he was going for an episode four feel. But I think he could have done an episode four feel without doing Death Star three point oh, and a the lot gravity, of other sort of things. The gravity also wasn't conveyed. Like when they blew up the Republic, the Republic Senate, it just wasn't very emotional. It's like, yeah, okay, we don't know anything about these people except that they're the New Republic, and they're now dead. Well, the next question is why is the why are the Rebellion still separate to the New Republic? Wasn't the whole point of the Rebellion to establish the New Republic? And would well, they the, not then is, become no, 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 the New Republic fleet? established the New Republic, and what happened, it's no longer the Rebellion. The Rebellion became the New Republic. And what happened is they weren't able to conquer the entire galaxy. They weren't able to unite the entire galaxy. And so what was left formed the, the uh, First Order. And because Leia did not trust the first order was suspicious of the first order she on her own with some alliance back or some uh, um uh, republic secret, backing secret, formed secret the republic resistance backing. secret, yeah. secret republic, republic backing, backing. I mean, keep in mind they only had resistance. like what they only had what 12 to 20 tie fighters in their fleet entirely x wings i'm sorry x wings wings but, but yeah you know, things confused no. there man yeah, the other the other thing you left out, EJ, is that Mon Mothma, who started, who helped form the New Republic, demilitarized the Republic right away. Yeah. Right, but also the First Order, but they still had a better military than the First Order. True. Nothing is on the scale of the Galactic Empire now. True. Yeah. So, yeah. and again, this is all stuff of reading. Reading I've done uh, outside of that. I need. I, I didn't realize there was a bunch of companion novels that I'm going to have to go and read now because exactly. I need to do that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now I will say the whole you know revisit Death Star again. Uh, called it two weeks ago. I called it, and I said that's what was making me worry about this movie, is that they're going to just do it's just going to be re uh, uh, Death Star Redux Part Three. And it's not going to be that exciting of a plot. That said, you don't go to a J.J. Abrams movie for the plot. You go no, to a J.J. Yeah. Abrams movie for the characters and for the action and excitement. No. And, and for the spectacular visual effects. Like, right. What would 10 out of 10 on the visual right? effects you know, the in that movie. Story. 12 out of 10. Yeah. The visual oh, effects yeah. were above the, the, and beyond. He nailed well, the and, effects. And, uh, Finn is watching um, uh, Poe. Uh, take out like Tie Fighter after Tie Fighter after Tie Fighter. I mean, it's just freaking awesome, you know. Yeah. Oh, there's one more thing I want to add to my review before I shut up and let other people talk. Um, can I just Sorry. say, am I am I the only one who actually has a little bit of fear of stormtroopers now? I mean, they are actually a hell of a lot more scary in this movie. I mean, especially the one that goes after Finn with the uh, with the what what is it the energy <laughs> weapon thing. The, the it's yeah it's a sort of a vibro blady sort of yeah dearly. I mean, that they actually it, it, it's phasma's you vibrator. mean Let's just get it right you mean traitor <laughs> you mean traitor because yeah. that's his oh, designation t r h r t r h r that is not his name that is his designation t r h r that exact stormtrooper is t r h r traitor nice wow. <laughs> Well then, yes. I mean, but I mean, come on, the stormtroopers actually shot people. Yeah. But then again, yeah. they're not. Pro- they're not stormtroopers. Yeah. They are. They're cl- no, they're not. No, they're... they are stormtroopers. They are. No, they. They call if you, stormtroopers. If you, if you go further into it, they are not actually stormtroopers. They're clone troopers. No, they're not. Oh, no, they're not. Uh, no, they're not. They. It, he explicitly says, "I'm going to have to convince." Um, yeah, Snoke, Snoke, to you, 
should use a clone army. And the reason they say that is explicitly to say these are not clones. Finn explicitly says that he was taken as a young child. And they say that he was away raised as taken away from his family and raised from a young child up to where he is. So they are not clones. Uh, they might as well, the way they've been raised, they might as well be. Yeah. But they're not. But they're not. <laughs> uh, I just Gale, like it how they decided Gale to put a janitor like on. Yeah. I just like it how they decided to put a janitor on the front lines for no apparent fucking reason. A what? He, he requested a transfer. He got tired of dealing with other people's shit. Oh, God. Literally. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bing. I don't think that's quite what he had in mind. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, I this? don't think he was, he was stationed on Starkiller Base any longer. Because he no. said, I was stationed there for a time. I know the yeah. layout. No. So I don't think you. I think he had a rotation there and he's no longer there. Yeah. No. Um, and it's. Yeah. We can use the force to blow it up. <laughs> That's not how it works. I, I like it how Kylo stops the laser bolt, though. Yeah, oh, you yeah, sort of see it as a, cool. a bolt of plasma. It's like, oh, this that's that's not good. <laughs> that is incredibly <laughs> not good. <laughs> I found that a little odd because I know oh, there's some powers of the force that were explained. In, in the other films, but I don't recall any th any other force user being able to do something like that. The closest we saw was Darth Vader when Han shot at him, dispersing the bolt. But some I people say that was his that armor. Was some force. people say that was the force. But he, but him freezing it. Oh, I know that was like what the shit, and he yeah. also totally froze people in place. Yeah. So I you have to. Have I believe that one is called Force Stop. Yeah. He's a bloodbender. Keep in mind that we have a complete... A bloodbender. <laughs> <laughs> Force bloodbend! <laughs> He's a bloodbender. <laughs> Avatar the Last Airbender for the win. Anyway. <laughs> but keep in mind wait, that... Like, wait, I just realised, I just realised. I just worked out what Finn's backstory is. Oh? She's Korra. <laughs> Someone go over there and smack him upside the head with a shovel, please. Hey, I will fly over there. I will fly over there. <laughs> airlock. Can we airlock? Worth it. <laughs> Wishful thinking. But... No, but keep in mind that like the, the force is entirely in flux now because the the um. Well, it's woken up. Ago, what do you expect? I, I read, uh, watched uh, Clone Wars. I read into like the backstory and everything. And prior, you had like you you know you you what developed was you had the Sith and their rule of two two and the Jedi and them going back and forth and fighting. Well, the Jedi are pretty much extinct. Luke may be technically a Jedi, but he's not the same as the Jedi from Anakin's time. Yeah. Uh, the generation before, and the Sith are exterminated. These are just Jedi, or, or not Jedi, but Force users who have aligned themselves with the dark Light side of the Force. So a lot of the rules are are in flux, and with and they may have taken a different track in exploring the dark side of the Force, and so you could have uh, a shift in abilities. Yeah, that's what I noticed. Also, I read this recently, and I didn't realize this before, but apparently Abrams did say that. Very specifically, that Kylo Ren was not a Sith apprentice, which Im which implies, therefore, that um, that Snoke is not a Sith. Yeah. Which means well, that we we we, we don't know where they're going to go with that because he's but not that... in charge of the movies anymore. So they could go in any direction. But Snoke is also thousands of years old. So true. But the point was, that everybody was thinking he might be Darth Plagueis, which would be a Sith. Therefore, that shouldn't be it. Well, just because even if Snoke is a Sith, that does not mean he's training. Uh, Kylo Ren in the same manner of, as a Sith, nor Fair does enough. that mean he hasn't left the Sith mindset and order behind. True, true. And remember at the end, he says, bring Kylo Ren to me, it is time to finish his training. Yeah. So maybe he's about so that, to become a Sith. So that implies that he's not tr fully trained yet. He's done this as a half ass. Yeah, which explains why A, he's got a he temper tantrums every <laughs> every single time he is on screen he has to have a temper tantrum. It's like it's in his contract. 
Have I want to seen... have a temper tantrum every time I am seen. I love I have love when guys... the stormtroopers walked away. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> have you guys seen uh, uh, the emo Kylo Ren Twitter feed? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Hilarious. Uh. Okay. No, but it's funny because I have a friend, uh, um, uh, Darth Ford is what he calls his YouTube channel. And um, I'm actually linking you guys to what I'm about to talk about right now. And he did a, he did like a, a 45 minute review of The Force Awakens, and in it he literally goes through and tells all the plot points of Episode Seven, except he's showing pictures from the exact same plot point in Episode Four. It is the same <laughs> movie, guys. It is the exact same movie. The only reason I was okay with that is because the focus was, as with any J.J. Abrams movie, the focus was not the plot, it was the characters and introducing these characters. Yeah. And yeah. the plot was just there to serve, to introduce, uh, the, to, to reintroduce the universe and to show all the characters. Exactly. And in that, he succeeded. Uh, it was a yeah, great success. I completely agree. All the characters are great. Finn's acting, I was a little meh, uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, I'll uh, agree with that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... Ray was spectacular. Ray was. Huh? Oh, yeah. Ray was Ray spectacular. Was she's made that. She's made her career for the rest of her life. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, all yeah. of them have, but especially her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where, where I had a problem with the story. Well, I thought the movie itself was pretty good, but in the and like the other films he's done, I thought the visual effects were phenomenal but where i had the problem was in some of the science stuff up of it like star killer base is on a planet and it's drawing power from a sun now i an don't entire think... star yeah like, right. and they already and shot it once sun. it's sucking in the entire star but they shot it once right. so where'd the second sun come from well, it could have been it could have been a binary system, or it could have just jumped somewhere else. Or it recharges the sun, but even then, I'm going, um, hello, this doesn't exactly make sense. And Star Wars then, never really the, was the, 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 this. Since when does Star Wars make sense? Yeah, well, put it this way: considering that when the when the planet explodes and we see the star take sort of its place at the very end, the star itself is actually ridiculously off scale. Yep. The star should have at least been a hundred to a thousand times larger. Like it should have filled the entire backside of the frame. It shouldn't be. Well, it we shouldn't also be like know how far away they, they were able to get before the planet exploded. Well, yeah, that's what the other... but even still, you could see the size of the original planet, and you could see the relative scaling down that it was doing. They didn't jump to light speed, which means that they were holding. A, they should be holding a relatively consistent speed. And the star was only a fraction larger than the planet it came out of. Now, the planet, the, the star itself should be massively, incomparably huge compared to that planet. That's but again, so, this, this is what something I've come to expect from J.J. Abrams. There's tons of plot holes like that, or Deus Ex Machina, or things being way too convenient, like R2 suddenly waking up, or uh, uh, Han so suddenly showing up. But because you're so invested in the characters and you've got so much spectacle and, and so much going on, you miss it. Yeah. Unless you go and see it 20 times or you're like me and just pick it apart from the beginning. <laughs> well, the other problem I saw with it was when the base, when Starkiller base fired, it's like um, the part, the first wave of planets they fired did the multiple shots at were they in the same system or were they in another system same and then system. The same theoretically system. in another system oh, oh was... I'm sorry yes theoretically yes all of them were in the same system but a different one than the one they were in yes right okay. so and so how how do they see and it? you're firing a light beam in, in, and a light beam cannot travel to another system that quick yeah. Well, they do well, mention that it was it was able to to travel in hyperspace. Yeah, they they yeah, do it mention that it's a hyperspace it's capable of, laser. It's one of those things, like, just a throwaway line. Yeah, again, it's another. It, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't a light convenient. beam, wasn't it? More superheated plasma then. Yeah, but but what is superheated plasma? 
Um, do you want me to go into a scientific definition of the difference? <laughs> no. I, 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 I really, I, I could too, but I'm too lazy and it's a lot of effort and I'm already falling asleep just contemplating it. One's particles, one's photons there. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. But so photons are particles and waves. Or are they waves? <laughs> that, in that <laughs> theory, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Shall we talk about the death in the movie? The death in the movie. Yes. I yes. Cried. I cried. Who? Okay, who saw that coming 50 million years away? I did. I mean, I did. Han Solo's always wanted his character, or Harrison Ford has ever since the sixth movie wanted his character to die. No, yeah. he wanted him to die in Empire. He wanted him to die in Empire. He didn't oh, want to come Empire? back. I thought it was he didn't he want to come back to the sixth. Six. No, that, he wanted to die in the five. the whole thing up is Lucas didn't want to kill him off, but they wanted to give uh, the character an out in case they couldn't get Ford back for episode six. Yeah. And he he has since changed his position on that. He actually, and, um, so but so the thing was, lack of a better way of putting it, he's getting old. They had to kill him off. But was he's it him or Chewie? Movie. So how they they announced that the entire main yep. cast of this movie will be returning in episode eight. The likely explanation for Harrison Ford's return is probably going to be in flashbacks of um of Kylo Ren's. Or yeah. flashbacks, you know, of Luke's or something, yeah. explaining what happened with Ren. I want yeah. him to come back as a glowy Force man. Well, the thing is, he <laughs> can't do that. He he wasn't a Jedi. But yeah. he some, somehow his connection with Leia and Luke, maybe I don't know. Yeah, maybe, because, but I don't. because we believe wobbly J J J Abrams. Carry, another dead Jedi is going to have to carry him back. And be there as Hell. well. So either Obi Wan or Anakin's gonna have to drag. Well, well, did you? Well, Obi Wan now looks like Ewan McGregor instead of uh, Alec Guinness. Well, yes, but you know, Obi Wan, of course, um, you know, they did use him and Yoda's words in the uh, in the Ray's flashback, flashback. Yeah. Ray's, and that implies that there could be likelihood of either Anakin, because uh, also Anakin was po was potentially going to show up. And as a forest ghost, so either Anakin or or, or Obi Wan, you know, the original, Obi the newer Obi Wan, um, one of the two that may appear as forest ghosts in the next movie. Yeah. Did Did you know they also got Alec Guinness's voice in there? Yes, they yeah. did. They that cut really his cool. cut his words. Well, what he <laughs> excuse me. What I mean, it's like he says like, Ray. Yes. Um, and then um, at some point, uh, Alec Guinness during the original uh, trilogy said afraid. Yeah, they took yeah, that they ray part. Yeah. I did like the I did like the fact that that lightsaber has lived longer than most of the characters. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do need an explanation of how that lightsaber, you know, was recovered. It fell so what? So what you're saying, Michael, is we really need um, the Star Wars sort of spin-off movie, um, Anakin's lightsaber, the story from beginning to finish. And you sort of... it, could be, it could be like Inside Out, where we're like inside the head of the lightsaber. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, figure, I figure that... <laughs> it's all great, I'm killing more younglings. You know, uh, I, 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 I wonder, again. I wonder, I wonder if it's possible that maybe, since, as we, as we, I think we all know, Londo, Orlando is going to be in episode 8. It's potential, oh, really? maybe, they'll, maybe they'll explain that. In episode eight, because Lando's the one who, you know, Cloud, uh, you know, uh, Bespin. Cloud City is huge, really yeah. lost it. Maybe he could, maybe he recovered it somehow. Yeah. Also, with uh, Ray, I don't see her using a traditional lightsaber for much longer. No. No, she's going to have something unique. I, yeah. I think she's actually going to wind get, up. Finn's going to get Luke's. Doubt it. Uh, I reckon no, she's no, going to get. not force sensitive, but, but... who could take, because she, she gives it to Luke, so Luke would. would take it from her, I'm guessing. Yeah. I, I, could, expect I, could, I can see her using a star. Into a I, I could see her using Darth Maul style. Yeah. Double end. Yeah, but but, but Luke built her already has a lightsaber. Up. What? Is, but why see... would Luke need two lightsabers? So that he can make a star for Rey? Oh. No, Rey yeah. would have to make the star for herself, but I can see the lightsaber being, being essentially a family heirloom, heirloom yeah. for Luke. The main yeah. point is... The lightsaber style doesn't Because everyone wants a lightsaber that's Ray. killed children and women. And... Yeah. But the basic lightsaber doesn't fit Ray's fighting style. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't. Mm, you, sure. you, could, you could see the way that she was fighting Ren at the very end. That she did not suit lightsaber combat very well. And, and give her a light to be perfectly honest, 
he didn't suit lightsaber combat very well either because he sucked horribly at it. <laughs> Granted, he <laughs> is had a hole in it. And watch it kick freaking ass left, right, and center across the entire fucking planet. Yeah, like, to be honest, I will grant him that he did have a hole in his chest and he did spend half of that battle holding his intestines in. But yeah. other than that, he, he, he should have absolutely wrecked them. Like, he showed abilities far beyond what he demonstrated in that final battle. True, but it, he lacked control. Yeah. And he also, he was more trying to convince her to turn to the dark side. That's true, too. Not just that, but, I also feel the, get the feeling that he was trying to, um... He was... Didn't have a good grip on the dark side. He was too happy about having killed his dad. No, mm. that's, that's the dark side happiness. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, you know, but he Abrams, was more Abrams... like he, was tra- he needed to prove to himself that he was evil. True. Yeah. And, and but that's Abrams why he's did... so happy, which means there was light. You know, Abrams, well, Abrams did um, did specifically announce that the act of killing Han was to show that he has no more light left in him. That he is beyond redemption. That is something that is official. He's beyond redemption, yes, but doesn't mean which means that, that he, he can't probably... still feel light side emotions and that will dampen the connection to the Force. He's just Maybe. not going to go back to the light. So, so they're not going to do what I thought they were going to do and do the whole redeem Vader him? being redempted. I, no, Look, I don't think so. That, uh, uh, April, I think we're looking at a quick, quick off of his head. Yeah, I, I'm expecting yeah. episode nine to be. Um, they reveal who Snoke, Snoke is, or whatever his name was, Snoke, Snoke, who Snoke is. Turns out that he's about two foot tall, and that, and as a result, he's everything. Else... He's seven feet tall. Yeah, it turns out he's... No, he's two foot tall. No, he's seven. No, he's not. Shut up yeah. and listen. Shut up and listen. <laughs> um, the, you've got Kylo, you've got the other... Uh, Ray and Finn, all sort of lightsaber up and go to try and take him out. He just looks at him and goes, eh, whatever. Turns into dust and disappears. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's just like, what just happened? <laughs> he is the Force Vampire. <laughs> Actually, that'd be an interesting twist. What if he's like Zoom in the Flash, how he can sort of absorb speed force, but yeah. for the force force, <laughs> he sort of you guys... absorbs you... their force force. What are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> Lots I, I of things. This one today. says, this one says bleach. <laughs> I think he's oh. in the LSD this morning. What well, do you guys, what do you guys think about the theory? If you guys have heard about this one yet, that. I think this is utter bullshit, sorry. But um, the theory that uh, Kylo Ren is actually good and trying to get, you know, trying to tr- to learn, the you know, to use the dark side so that he and Rey can defeat Snoke. Yeah, uh, no. I don't believe it. I'm sorry. No. I'm now, sorry, that plot line got thrown out. When he killed his father. Yeah. Well, well no, not necessarily. The th- you know, the theory went ahead and said that that was what he was asking Han for help to do. Yeah. Now, does, does, has it occurred to anybody that maybe uh, I don't know how, like how they, how he got stabbed or something, uh, that, that Han could Han... Be, still be alive, kind of like Darth Maul style? Nope. Oh, nope. 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 Had, nope. It, had it occurred to anyone that Han could have stabbed himself, if Michael's hypothesis is correct, because you don't actually see. Kylo holding the lightsaber until Han starts falling away. Wait, Michaels, what? What, what have I that I have? You know, the, the, the thing you were just talking it was about. CJ. CJ? It was. I'm tired, okay? My brain's not working. <laughs> uh, anyway! Uh, 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 you were just... talking about the, the, the theory that, that um, uh, Kylo Ren is actually good. And yeah, he's, that one. Yeah. He's, he's, oh. And so just Han. Kind of getting, be, being, getting the inside track so he can defeat. Um, Darth Snooky or Darth Plagueis or whatever. I'm just going to call him Darth Gollum because he looks like Gollum. <laughs> uh, uh, all I have to say to this is nope. Just nope. Yeah. One, he's been stabbed through the chest with a lightsaber. Two, he's taken a, a fall into a giant chasm. Three, not long after he takes that fall into a giant chasm that's planet pretty much boom. bottomless, planet go boom. And is replaced well... by a star. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay, a, okay. It's a f- Darth- fairly fitting gravestone for Han Solo when you think about it. Darth Look, Maul we put this star where you died. That's your gravestone. <laughs> that's like... true. 
It's like, holy crap! <laughs> Hey, Darth Maul was cut in half and he survived, so... But Darth Maul wasn't human. Darth Maul got cloned. No, but the original Darth Maul survived. The original Darth Maul did survive. He has robot legs. And walks around like a spider. Yeah. Yeah, that, that might be, but... The point is... he's also He also had the Force, and they proved that you can survive with... And use the force with frickin' robot limbs. Han, not strong in force. Yeah. Han, well. Han, hockey fighter pilot slash smuggler. Not so much on the force side there, and... There is the theory that he does have a slight, you know, does have some use of the force, seeing as he's, like, incredibly lucky everywhere. I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't he might not be trained, and he might not be aware of it, but... Um, the chi uh, well, like uh, Obi Wan said, you know, there's no such thing as luck; it's the Force, and he's got a lot of luck. Yeah, doesn't mean that it's that he's necessarily strong enough in the Force to be counted amongst a proper Force wielder. Yeah, true. Yeah. true. Oh, it's yeah. Like, it's like it's like comparing Krill, it's like comparing Yamcha to Goku. Just because he's got a power level doesn't mean he can do anything with it. <laughs> but a boom. <laughs> Hey, David, I have actually a question for you guys. Uh, oh, God. No, 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 no. It just... Which character do you wish was more fleshed out in the movie? I personally wish... Beyond Phasma. Phasma was crap. Um, I wish there was more of Maz, Maz uh, in it. Yeah, the, the tiny little gremlin yeah, lady. the thousands of years old woman who's seen the rise and fall of various dark empires and such... There's so much more to her, and I hope she's in the next one. Yeah. I, 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 I would love to see her 20 movies, because you need 20 movies to explain her entire story. Yeah. I want more Poe. Oh, po. oh yeah. Po. We're getting more Poe in the next movie, which is going to be good. But I, I, but I mean, which do you wish was more you done in this movie? In this movie? Poe. R2-D2. Po. <laughs> R2 <-D2. laughs> Why Have is he, uh, he catatonic, and why the hell does he just magically wake up? Well, he's I've seen J.J. Abrams he... try to explain it. It's a bullshit explanation that if they were going to go that route, they should have at least hinted at it in the film. What, what, which, which one are you referring to? J.J. Abrams said, like, basically that when BB-8 comes and says, hey, I've got this piece, do you have the rest? Yeah, uh, yeah. It kind of gets R2-D2 working and putting things together uh, but because he is so old and has the older technology, um, it takes a while for him to come out of low power mode, and he just happens to come out there at the end. And well, I think the timing is a little coincidental, but I can see it taking that long for him to boot up. I mean, he is, but he's over 70 years old. Right. <laughs> then say that. Okay? There was an incredible lack of exposition on that, why, and also a lack of exposition on why... Um, uh, Ray could all of a sudden use the force or yeah, and, and to really that bad. level and there was also a credible lack of explanation as to why Han Solo suddenly shows up two seconds after they get the Millennium Falcon off the surface because he said it's easy to track it then okay. why couldn't he find it before because exactly. it wasn't that powered easy on track. it wasn't powered on but yeah. they don't explain that yes they he did he literally, he literally says that um that was easy to track once it, you know once they used, started using it. It was. They, he did say that. Yeah. I, okay, I got the easy to track. I did not get the once it was powered on. I didn't hear I'm that. I'm almost so certain they was, said something along those lines. Pretty sure they it, did. He just, it just said it was easy to track. He didn't mention the power-up. Okay, anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it is time for Eugene to do his model review, I think, because we don't have that much time left. <laughs> well, I'll try to talk fast. Uh, today we're going to focus big time on Star Wars. We'll Shock start, Asp. Uh, we'll start with the Russian company Zevda. My apologies if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, they have announced that, announced that they're going to be doing kits. And the first kit in their lineup is a 1-2,667 scale Star Destroyer from Star Wars Rebels. That brings it in at 60 centimeters. And for those of us who don't use centimeters, it comes in at about two feet. Uh, release That's a big Star Destroyer. That's almost the same size as the Lego Star Destroyer. 
that will come out next year. Uh, then Dragon Models has announced that they've also got the Star Wars license. And they're going to be producing kits in one one four one one hundred and forty fourth scale, and there'll be an AT-AT, a Tie Fighter, an X-wing T sixty five, an X-wing T seventy, the Millennium Falcon, and an AT-ST with a snow speeder. And then at one thirty fifth scale, they're going to be producing an AT-AT. That's what going to be that, huge. Well, what makes that interesting? is 135th scale is a standard scale for military model kits. How'd you like to run an ad ad up against, say, oh, an M1 Abrams or... Um, you're going to have a bad day. If you're, in the, if you're in the Abrams, you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> or, if, if you really want to have fun with a sci-fi diorama, the Terminator kits I mentioned a few weeks ago, guess what scale they're in? Ooh, 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 pick me, pick me! One thirty fifth. <laughs> Damn it! I was gonna say one seventieth. <laughs> then the last item we're gonna mention is the one kit, batch of kits that are harder to get because they're not imported to all countries due to different licensing. And rumor has it that Ravel doesn't like people bringing them into the U.S. Whether that's true or not, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But these are the Bandai kits, the same people that do Gundam models. Mm. And are they we talking the Bandai Star Wars? Off. Yes. Now, out of actually, I've got a friend who runs a store that was... One of Fifth Armory for the win! Sorry. Yeah. What? Um, he got a whole pile of them before the, the last convention that we had. Um, and he's basically been told by the supplier that they... That they're no longer allowed to sell them overseas. They are no longer allowed by Disney LucasArts to sell those really outright epic Star Wars kits to overseas countries anymore. So, and, and these things, I've seen the reviews on some of these. These are phenomenal kits. The review of the two-pack of R2-D2 and R5-D4 is absolutely phenomenal. Those things These ran are... out the door in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Con. How, they, how much are they running for? The suggested retail came in at about $25 US plus shipping. They have nine characters from the initial run, which was Darth Vader, the Stormtrooper, R2-D2 with R5-D4, C-3PO, a Scout Trooper with speeder bike, a Sand Trooper, Boba Fett, and a Shadow Trooper. Then they did um, some vehicles, which was X-wing, Tie Fighter, the Tie Fighter Advance, Snow Speeder, the and the ATST. AT they uh, a Y-wing and Boba Fett's Slave One, and they also had a motorized X-wing. Then they have some coming from the Force Awakens, uh, which was the First Order Storm. Arm Trooper and an R2-D2 with BB-8. And they also had the new X-Wing coming and the, and the First Order TIE Fighter, Captain Phasma, and Kylo Ren were also scheduled to be coming. Anything from the new stuff is banned and you can't get the... If you got a shipment coming in of the older stuff, that will probably be the only shipment of it you can get. So, Why would they if you the newer stuff? simple money, I'm not sure how that gets some money if you can't buy it. They Disney does not want the super high quality epic Bandai stuff taking over the markets where their cheaper knockoffs are going to be present. Mm -hmm. and, and the problem is, these are fantastic kits compared to the Ravel kits, and that's the thing is if. If Disney would allow them to come in, the sales would be phenomenal because these are really good kits. They are, but at the same time, they're just... Yeah. It's Disney being Disney. Yeah, but if you have a friend in those countries, you can just have them buy it, pay, reimburse them, and they can ship it to you. Yeah, you can do that, but it's basically... They've made it so that they cannot be imported by stores. You can probably... 
get a single one or two here and there off places like Hobby Link Japan or eBay and stuff, but buying them in the bulk needed to put them in a store properly, you're not going to be able to pull off anymore. And, and that's the problem I have. I can't get them at a reasonable cost in order to carry them at my little shop because it's going to cost me probably 35 five to 40 bucks per kit. Which, which will drive I'm the gonna... price up, which will mean it won't sell. Right. Because you're having to buy them at, at retail. Right. Or I can't buy them at Yeah, I've got to buy them at retail plus shipping. And that and that hurts. Yeah, yeah. it's just going to make it impractically expensive. Nobody's going yep. to buy it. Right. But that's the end of the model report. All right. Um, brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. I do have one quick uh, piece of news that's sci-fi related, though. Sounds good. We're about to move on to the news. Michael is just loading up the the news stuff now. Because Stuart so, didn't turn up, so I blame him for us not being ready to do the news. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, cover, my, I'll cover my piece real quick, and then Michael yep. can go. Sounds um, good. For those who are unaware, Starship Farragut is running a Kickstarter for their final original Star Trek series episode. After this one's over, they're moving on to movie era episodes. Um, it's called Homecoming. They're, the Kickstarter, they're looking for $15,000 and they're at 13772 They have a special guest for this episode, a gentleman by the name of Stan Lee will be having a cameo. Mm -hmm. So... You have right now sixty nine hours to go if you'd like to back this project. Yeah, I was actually there when they um, were filming the bit with Stan Lee. It's it's a uh, it's going to be a little lot of fun. Um, I want to throw one thing out for the Aussie guys. Yep. Uh, the one hundred fifth has just got their first postcon restock, so we have some new stuff up and on the website ready to go. Nice. Quite a lot of the stuff we ran out of run out of as well um we're also at the next con we're going to have a few interesting things on display that are going to be able to be considered as custom orderings so if you get some if you want to buy something from um zomster and then you need some add-on parts for it we, the 105th will be able to get them for you and basically we're also looking to run a model kit building day in early January. Nice. So I'll get a solid date for next week and give you and put that up. So sounds good. Uh, that, Michael. That, yep. That sorry, Amy. Doesn't buy out the store. Yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I, to, I still haven't built most of those, to be honest. And if you come to the model kit day, you can also buy from the shop as well. So. I, I, see, my problem is I don't have any shelves to put them on, <laughs> so most of them are still sitting in the boxes on the ground. I've also got like half dozen Lego kits that I need to build and put up on display as well, but again, no shelf space. So I want a Lego. In other words, you went nuts and built it. In other words, you went nuts and bought yourself a backlog. Yeah, a little bit crazy. Anyway, Michael, the news. Hey, so guys, I'm Stuart today. Um, Stuart, Hi, Stuart you've changed. <laughs> Uh, thanks. So, news. Um, since I'm kind of pulling this out of my ass, uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and start with the things I know off the top of my head. One, Deadpool trailers came out. Fantastic. Yes. Oh, yeah. They were amazing. Um, because we're short on time, I'm just going to power through. Two, um, well, Star yeah. Wars! Star Wars reached a billion dollars! Oh, that's my job, David! <laughs> <laughs> you Bad have facts. to do Too the slow. news. <laughs> anyway, yes, Star Wars in a million, a billion dollars, fastest in history, 12 days. Um, also, fastest to reach $100 million in IMAX in 12 days. Um, it's gunning for the top. I mean, we'll have to see if it can last. You know, Avatar didn't, didn't get hit immediately, but it went for ages, and it picked up all the money that way. Um, Jurassic World hit it immediately and die down we have to see how star wars holds up um um crap well, i lost my train of thought uh stan lee turned 93 today or was this 
Yeah, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. He turned 93. Happy birthday, Stan Lee. Happy birthday, Stan Lee. We still want you on the podcast. It's not going to happen, <laughs> I know, but don't blame me for trying. <laughs> yes. Um, the Expanse, of course, came. Yeah, you know, the next episode came out. Uh, this or comes out tomorrow. I'm sorry. Episode three, four, five, five. No. Yes, yeah, I've already five. I've already seen the I've already seen the four. I've seen but the four. three and four were released online, but I'm pretty sure. Have I really not watched it two weeks already? Oh well, <laughs> <laughs> I need to catch up. Um, 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 I will say, and you guys are gonna be shocked at me for saying this. I have a sci-fi channel related news that's not really sci-fi and i'm voluntarily putting this on the podcast um, whoa 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 let's not I get know. crazy Stuart. let's not get crazy michael will hate us for it the, the magicians um the new show for sci-fi they aired the um they aired the the first episode immediately after the finale of of uh of um childhood's end and i watched it and it actually was fantastic um, I will be watching it because it is a scripted drama, which is something that sci-fi needs to get back into, and they need support for that. Um, and uh, the, let me just put a disclaimer. The only reason I bring up a fantasy thing is because I'm absolutely pulling this out of my ass. Because Stuart's not here, so it's his fault. <laughs> um, you can talk about the Disneyland. Yeah, they're, they're leveling a large chunk of Disneyland and turning it into Star Wars land. Yeah. Well, Bye-bye Tomorrowland. Yeah. yeah. Well, I live like so. So what? So what you're saying, EJ, is they've they've said, okay, we're gonna get rid of Tomorrowland, and build a long time ago in a far, far away land. <laughs> yeah, they're they're ta- they're getting rid of my favorite land within Disneyland and replacing it with Star with... Wars. Now, <laughs> Star Wars is all great. Star Tours has been there for a long time. I am not cool with them taking over the entire section. The entire land. It's I mean, look, it, it's their new cast giant, and it may very well end up beating out Marvel's movies eventually. I mean, we do have five more scheduled Star Wars movies in the next few years. Um, I'll go ahead and mention those. Rogue One next December, um, Episode 8 uh, in 2017. Han Solo film um, in 2018. Episode nine in 2019, and then Boba Fett in 2020, and they are not going to be stopping there unless ticket sales drop dramatically. So we which will get they will because more... they're going to be they're going to they're going to uh, glut the market. Yeah. Well, that, that... The, the thing is that these anthology films aren't dealing with the main cast, and therefore the main cast isn't going to get worn out. And the producers and everything, they're all completely different crews, which is... Yeah, the, the, the audiences, he means. The audiences True. are going to... Yeah, the audience is going to get tired of it. Part, part of the reason why Star Wars has lasted as long as it has is because there was so little of it. So people were really, 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 really like excited and picking apart each little bit. But Agreed, now that they're coming out think... so much so quick, they're going to just they're going to flood the market and, no, yeah. and nobody's going to care. Yeah, anyway. I don't think that's going to actually happen until the, the next trilogy. I think this trilogy and these anthology films will still get a ton of attention because we have not had any anthology films yet. And Boba Fett and Han Solo are such popular characters. Boba that Fett can go die in get... a fire. Yeah. Well, anyway, they're, they're, they're also going just to get all mystery from around them, which is going to true. Hurt. Yeah. I think. The anyway, anyway, the, the, the only the only thing left that I want to touch on the last minute and a bit on the podcast is Michael. That picture of yours is wrong. There's already eight Star Wars movies. Okay, the Clone Wars movie is not included in that because it, uh, if that's what you're referring to, because it's more, it's considered more of a pilot to these series. And it was still released in cinemas. It was just the only Star wasn't, Wars wasn't, movie wasn't not to reach number one. It was released in cinemas over here. I, I am not sure if it, if it was in the states. Yeah, I did not know about that. Well, it was. Okay, it just wasn't very popular. Okay, well the picture's wrong. Fine, but. You know what? I, I'm glad it got so much attention. It's... Oh, that was hilarious. The, some of the comments on that are great. Oh, I anyway. know. It's great. <laughs> so if you want to laugh, jump on uh, Facebook.com slash save sci-fi and scroll down until you find that picture. There uh, we are also doing... Um, movies. Yeah. Just, just, yes, okay, that's we, we, what we, I was looking for. I was looking for that. We don't have the time. 
Um, <laughs> we've got 30 seconds. Anyway, oh, make sure you jump on Facebook.com slash Save Sci-Fi. Give us a like. Um, all our posts, show. give them shares. Show. Show. Um, I'm getting to the after show. Shut up. <laughs> In a minute, we're going to be doing an after show. We're going to talk about um, Childhood's End, which we all mo- mostly enjoyed. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much it. Catch you later. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye, Bye everyone.